Welcome back to TK Tennis. Today I wanted to do a response video to Jonas's video uh, from the Tennis Nerd about why heavier tennis rackets are better. So I wanted to take uh, that video, so you haven't seen it yet, I'll post the link probably in the description below or above here. And the reason is there seems to be this fallacy that's going around uh, from a lot of YouTube creators about heavier rackets being better. And let me make uh, let me be clear on on my point of view on that. I do believe the heaviest racket that you can play with is better, or that you can play with optimally. What does that mean, really? So what it doesn't mean is the uh, heaviest racket that you can play with when you're hitting practice shots, when you're just rallying. If you're a decent player, anyone can rally back and forth. And with a heavier racket, heavier rackets do feel more stable, more solid, and they have the sensation that I play better with them. But that's, you have to be careful. It's a little bit of a fallacy. What you really need to be paying attention to is what racket can I handle optimally when I'm playing a match? That's what really matters. So if you just go out and you're hitting practice balls and using a heavy racket, it might feel great. But you have to be really careful because once you start running around the court and you're reaching for the ball and you're starting to need to adjust to the ball, that additional weight is more of a hindrance than it is a help. So my response to that video is definitely watch that video but I see this trend in tennis about heavier rackets are better. I don't necessarily agree with that. So the question becomes is, how do I know how heavy of a racket can I handle? And it comes down to a couple things, and I'm gonna answer that question in just a moment. But in terms of heaviness, there's two basic premises on weight. One is static weight, and how heavy is a racket? Or this way, right? How heavy is the entire racket? And the other way is swing weight. Where is the weight situated in the racket? So how much swing weight or how much weight does the tip of the racket have when you're hitting the ball? For most people, it's a really good idea to learn what your swing weight is, because I think that's probably a little bit uh, the more important number. Uh, but going back to heavier rackets, so this trend that's happening on, on a lot of people recommending heavier rackets, I, I think you need to be really careful. And one is because the pros use swing weights from 325 to about 340. Like center uses a heavy swing weight around 340. Uh, Djokovic's swing weight is less in the 330s, but his entire racket weight is much heavier. And many of the female pros are about 320 to 330, 325-ish, I think is probably average in terms of swing weight. But what I find interesting is that there are a lot of people who are sub 5.5 that are trying to use rackets that are 330 swing weights, 335, 340. It's almost like the ego in us tennis players are saying, well, if the pros can use a 330 or 340 swing weight, I can use it too. And that's complete bullshit. That does not apply. Now, if you're 6'2 and you're a guy and you're an ox, maybe you can get away with it. But if you're a sub 5'5 five, five player, and almost everyone is, so 5'0, 4'5, 4'0, never mind 3'5 or 3'0s, you should not be using rackets anywhere near the weight that the pros are using in terms of swing weight and static weight. And the only way to know that is when you're playing matches. So now I wanna answer the question of how should you know your swing weight? Um, and I do have a little bit of a process to that, what your optimal swing weight is. Uh, first, you need to be able to measure your swing weight and your entire weight of your racket. So you need a static scale, scale that measures in grams. Um, swing weight tools are a little bit more expensive and that's a little bit harder to do. So you'll have to find someone with a swing weight measuring tool that can tell you what your swing weight is. But I'm gonna throw up a chart here on the screen. This is based on level. I basically have it in three buckets. The first bucket is a 2.5 level to a 4.0. Then you have, which are sort of the more typical recreational player. And then you have the more advanced player between 4.0 and 5.0. And then you have, of course, your adv highly advanced player, which are 5.5s five and 7.0s. And you'll see in this chart, I have a recommendation in terms of swing weight ranges on what you should be using. Uh, and to be careful of not falling into the trap of having a racket that's too heavy. Uh, again, you can play with it and practice well, but you won't be able to play in matches very well. Then coming back to how do I know, like what shot should I determine what my optimal swing weight is? So if you're demoing rackets and you're using, um, and you know your swing weight of a racket you're using, here's a very good way to do it. You wanna take your shots with, the, your shots that you're using one arm with, so typically a forehand or a one-handed backhand. So let me give you an example. So if you're using a heavier racket with a two-handed backhand, heavier racket is probably only gonna make that shot better. 
it's not going to be a hindrance because you have two hands and full shoulder turn into the ball. So you're not going to be have a detriment on your backhand. So you want to, if you have a two-handed backhand, that's not the shot you want to be gauging what your swing weight should be. So if you have a forehand, which is one hand, which of course typically it is, that's the shot you want to be measuring. So can you hit a great ball with a certain racket, with a certain wing weight, swing weight for an hour consistently in match play on your forehand? Now, if you have a one-handed backhand, don't use the forehand as the gauge, use the backhand because it's typically just from biomechanically, it's the weaker shot. So you might be able to handle a heavier racket on your forehand, uh, but if you're a one-handed backhand, you're, you're gonna probably struggle on your backhand side. So if you're a one-handed backhand, you're gonna wanna use the heaviest racket that you can handle perfectly in terms of swing weight and static weight that you can hit your one-hander well and then every other shot will fall in line behind that. So it's going to be either the forehand, the one-handed backhand, and a combination of your serve. So when you're serving, you need to hit spin, right? So you need to be able to accelerate up over the ball to hit top spin. And that's also gonna be a shot that if your racket is too heavy, you're gonna collapse on the ball and you're not gonna be able to impart too much spin. So whether it's your serve or your forehand or your serve and your one-handed backhand, those are the strokes you want to pay attention to to figure out what your optimal uh, swing weight is. Now again, checking out the graph that I'm going to put up again right here, the chart. This is again just guidelines. Depending on your level, you probably want to be in these, those ranges in terms of your swing weight based on your level. This chart will apply to 95% of the people that are out there. So. Watch uh, Jonas, uh, Jonas's video from Tennis Nerd. He does a really nice job, but again, I think a lot of people are suggesting higher racket weights, um, and I think it's, uh, I wouldn't say dangerous, but I don't think it's great for your tennis. Um, I think there's too much ego involved. You have most of these YouTube creators um, that are not highly advanced players anymore. And one person to point out is, is Nick from, from Intuitive Tennis. He used to be an excellent player. Of course, he's getting a little bit older. He's not playing as much. And he also has realized, and I think he would agree with this if he sees this video, is that he's already recognized that heavier rackets are not beneficial for most players. And that applies even to himself, who hits a great ball, but he doesn't play today like he once did. So he's recognizing that the swing weight needs to come down. The static weight needs to come down. We are not Novak Djokovic. We are not Yannick Sinners. We are not Carlos Aquilares. And the rackets that they are using and the weights that they are using are absurd. It's absurd to think that if you're not playing every day for four hours a day, and you're not training, and you're not a 6'5 player or above, that you should be handling the same type of rackets that they're using. So that's the uh, a contrary view to this trend that's happening in tennis about swing weights. Um, hopefully that clears up some things and gives you at least a, a counterpoint and I really think you should try and look at that graph in the next video I'm going to have a video on the secrets for racket customization that goes through the process of what should you care about most first and foremost in terms of balance static weight and swing weight so I'll have a more in-depth video that covers how do you customize your racket what's the best way to do it what's the best process to do it um, that'll be coming up in, a, in an upcoming video. So that's it for today. Thanks for tuning in. If you can help me get to a thousand subscribers, please hit the like and subscribe button. And thanks for tuning in to TK Tennis, and I'll see you in the next video.